Hi everybody, this is DataViz Bob here, and today I'm going to give you a very quick and convenient comparison of ray tracing and ray casting. So this this uh, video is dedicated to Al Mahasna, uh, who asked about the difference. He'd like to see. Uh, you know, a little review of the difference, and he's studying theoretically very hard for his data, visualiz data visualization exam. Uh, and I'm not in my office today. I am in a place called the Sea Breeze Recreational Center at the Villages in Central Florida. In Central Florida, visiting my dad and stepmom. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, we thank them very, very much for letting them use this amazing, beautiful whiteboard, uh, which is even better than the one in my office. Okay, so <clears throat> let's start with just an informal definition of ray tracing. Uh, so I would say ray tracing is an algorithm to compute the lighting, accurate lighting and shading of a three-dimensional scene. That's an informal definition. Sometimes the goal of ray tracing is to compute a photorealistic scene rendering. Not always, but that's sometimes the goal. Ray casting, I would say, is a, uh, an algorithm to visualize volume data. <clears throat> So let's, before we, we start out with the differences, I thought it might be useful just to list some of the things they have in common, right? So what do they have in common? So they're both what we would call image order techniques, right? So ray tracing and volume ray casting. What does that mean? That means, <clears throat> that they traverse image space and they perform some operation on every pixel in image space, right? So that, that's what image order means. So I'm just gonna draw one ray from a ray traced scene. Now these are two scenes. This is supposed to be a teapot and that's supposed to be a person's head. Um, you'll notice that the, the teapot is, has no uh, fill, um, so it's a surface only, and this person's head is, is filled, so it's, it's a volume, right? So <clears throat> this is what happens in ray tracing. So in, a, a ray is cast for every pixel in image space into the 3D scene until it hits the surface, right? And then when it hits the surface, other rays are cast into the scene. For example, a, a ray might be cast that reflects off the teapot, for example, at the angle of incidence. And the goal is to sample the lighting conditions of the scene so we can compute accurate lighting and shading for every pixel and image space. So we might, we might sample object space with, with more rays. For example, a ray like this and a ray like this. And depending on where the light sources are, we'll get different computations of the lighting and shading at that pixel. <clears throat> this is the observer, by the way. That's an eye for an observer. So in, in ray casting, it's also called volume ray casting, it's a similar but not the same operation. So <clears throat> we have for each pixel, this is supposed to be a pixel, that little box in image space. We cast a ray into the volume, but when we hit the surface, uh, we don't stop the ray and we don't reflect the ray and we don't change the direction of the ray, the ray keeps going. So it keeps going into the volume until it hits the boundary. 
And what it does is it samples the volume data along the way. So I'm just going to draw some samples along the, along the volume. So the rays in ray casting are trying to collect information about the lighting and shading. And the rays in volume ray casting are trying to gather information about the volume data and see inside the volume. So what they have in common is they're both image order techniques. They both compute pixel colors and opacity. So they both, that's, that's what they do. RGB alpha values. So RGB alpha values. Um, the output is the same. So the output is, is an image in both cases. It's just a collection of pixels with red, green, blue, and alpha values. I would say the application is different. So the application in ray tracing is computer graphics. And in, with computer graphics, you do things like um, play games, right? And make movies like Lord of the Rings, for example. In volume ray casting, the application is, is visualization, so volume visualization. And one of the most popular volume visualization applications is medical visualization. So the goals, the goals of ray tracing and volume ray casting are different. So the goal, the goal of, of ray tracing is usually to compute a realistic scene, a realistic image. Whereas vol in, in volume ray casting, that might not be the goal. It's to get, it's, it's to visualize the details or some features inside a volume. So we may want to visualize visualize features inside a volume. And they are 3D. So we already talked about the rays that the now the rays are different in ray casting and, and volume ray in, in ray tracing. So in ray tracing, there's an arbitrary number of rays. So we have the so-called primary ray, but then we have second and tertiary and maybe even more rays. So we have an arbitrary number of rays for each pixel. Whereas in volume ray casting, we generally have one ray per pixel. Uh, that's called the primary ray. And one thing I forgot to mention is the input to the scene is generally different. So in ray tracing, the input is generally a set of surfaces. Surfaces. So we generally see surfaces, and in volume ray casting, the input is a set of volume data, or data laid out on a grid in 3D space. So yeah, that is a quick and convenient comparison of ray tracing and ray casting. Um, I'm going to put a link to uh, a book that I think is very helpful on this subject called Data, Data Visualization Principles and Practice by Alex Talea. Um, so the second edition of the book just came out in 2015. It's a great, great book. Uh, whenever I pick up that book, I just think, 
I don't know how Alex managed to, to, to write down all this, this information. It's a lot of information. He, he, he must, he's a very hard worker. Um, yeah, and thanks for watching.